having a burning sensation down there after a weekend of high risky behavior? What antibiotics are used for chlamydia and gonorrhea? How do we treat pregnant women and those with true allergies for these sexually transmitted infections? Welcome to the Code Blue Debrief, a clinical pharmacotherapy, YouTube, and podcasts, where we discuss emergency medicine and critical care, pharmacology, and disease state management. My name is Mark, and I'm a board-certified emergency medicine pharmacist that makes clinical pharmacotherapy content on the social medias. I post daily infographics, reels, and patient cases. Follow at FarmWise on your favorite platform. I'll take this time to welcome the first timers, and I appreciate those who came back to learn some more. Make sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell for more farm facts deposits in your drug bank. For today's episode, we'll be discussing chlamydia and gonorrhea, antibiotic treatment updates, and preferred agents for a pregnant women and those with true allergies for these sexually transmitted infections. Getting familiar with chlamydia and gonorrhea. Back in 2018, the CDC reported that one in five patients in the United States had a sexually transmitted infection, with nearly half of new diagnoses being aged 15 to 24 years old. This contributed to nearly $16 billion of direct medical costs. STIs are associated with negative stigmas that prevent patients from seeking timely and appropriate treatment. Engaging in respectful, compassionate, and non-judgmental conversations sets interactions tone between healthcare provider and patient. Before we get into the topic, I want to address the importance of expedited partner therapy. This is a harm reduction strategy that expands therapy to the partner of the patient, which is especially important for those unlikely to seek therapy. Depending on state law, partner therapy can be offered without being seen by medical professionals. Here's an example of what I do as an emergency medicine pharmacist. Patient comes to the ED requesting STI testing, but declines wanting treatment until cultures have finalized. As the EMP, I review STI amongst many other infection results for patients discharged from the ED. Call them once cultures finalize and modify therapy as appropriate per collaborative practice agreements. I've practiced as an adult pharmacist in Nevada and Utah, which allows us to use the prescription written for the patient and write in parentheses to the partner and name of the patient so that the pharmacy can generate the prescription for the partner once declared upon pickup. The risk of untreated STIs can lead to several complications, including infertility, ectopic pregnancy, fetal demise, and pelvic inflammatory disease. These are easily preventable with prompt identification in high-risk patients. Let's review the two organisms behind the most common sexually transmitted infections in the U.S., chlamydia and gonorrhea. Patients with chlamydia or gonorrhea can present with purulent, vaginal, or penile discharge, genital pain, and or urinary symptoms. However, many patients with extragenital infections present asymptomatic. Lower urogenital tract infections in women may progress to pelvic inflammatory disease, which is often associated with fevers and purulent cervicitis. For men at high risk, epididymitis and orchitis can develop, leading to inflammation and severe pain of the testes. In rare cases, dissemination of these organisms results in more severe systemic infections. Chlamydia trachomatis and Neisseria gonorrhea are the causative pathogens for these sexually transmitted infections. They're both gram-negative bacterium that can be spread via vaginal, anal, or oral sex. But wait, there's actually more ways to be exposed to these organisms. Chlamydial and gonococcal conjunctivitis can be transmitted to neonates from cervical transmission. Poor hand hygiene is an easy way to transfer chlamydia or gonorrhea into your eye. Chlamydia trachomatis is actually one of the more common bacterial ocular infections leading to vision loss. Urogenital chlamydia and gonorrheal infections can be tested with vaginal and endocervical swabs or first void urine samples. Nucleic acid amplification tests are typically used off these samples given their high specificity 
and sensitivity. High-risk patients should receive empiric antimicrobial therapy even if diagnostics haven't resulted yet. It'll be important for us to briefly review the fairly recent 2021 STI guidelines from the CDC regarding treatments for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Preferred treatment for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Both STDs often co-infect patients. For high-risk patients with suspected chlamydia or gonorrhea, they should receive empiric antibiotics for both organisms. For known diagnostics, antibiotics should be tailored towards specific pathogen. Chlamydia trachomatis can be treated with doxycycline 100 mg by mouth twice daily for seven days or azithromycin 1000 mg by mouth for one dose. Doxycycline is the preferred agent given increasing resistance to azithromycin. Additionally, recent trials have associated doxycycline with greater effectiveness compared to azithromycin. Dukers, Muihers, and colleagues published a trial in 2019 comparing the effectiveness of azithromycin and doxycycline in uncomplicated rectal or vaginal chlamydia trachomatis infections in women. This was a prospective multicenter cohort trial that randomized patients to doxycycline 100 mg by mouth twice daily for seven days or azithromycin 1000 mg by mouth for one dose. Participants self-collected swabs for the primary endpoint of microbiologic cure, defined by a negative test at four weeks. From their analysis that included 416 patients, doxycycline was found to have a 95% microbiologic cure compared to azithromycin's 79% for confirmed rectal chlamydia. For patients with vaginal infections, there was not a statistically significant difference in effectiveness. In 2021, Dombrowski and colleagues conducted a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial in men with confirmed rectal chlamydia to compare azithromycin 1,000 mg by mouth once versus doxycycline 100 mg by mouth twice daily for seven days. They enrolled 177 patients, but only included 135 in their analysis for those who returned for test of microbiologic cure at four weeks. From their results, doxycycline was associated with 100% microbiologic cure compared to the 74% of azithromycin. Statistical significance was maintained in the intent to treat and per protocol populations. These two recent trials contributed to the CDC's recommendation of preferring doxycycline over azithromycin. The latter can still be considered but may not be as effective. For concerns of adherence or picking up the prescription, azithromycin may be the more suitable option. Neisseria gonorrhea belongs to a bit of a tricky species of bacteria. Neisseria species contain more resistant mechanisms compared to chlamydia. Gonococcal resistance has gotten to a point where cephalosporins are now the only primary class of antibiotics that can be used for treatment. Previously, azithromycin was indicated as dual treatment with ceftriaxone 250 mg. However, increasing resistance has made azithromycin ineffective and is no longer recommended. Increasing resistance trends has led to the CDC's recommendation of using higher doses of ceftriaxone rather than utilizing dual therapy. Patients with or suspected gonorrhea should receive ceftriaxone 500 mg intramuscularly or intravenously. Patients weighing greater than 150 kilograms should receive an increased dose of ceftriaxone 1,000 mg IM or IV. IM administration does not provide a depot effect and more allows an easier route of administration for treatment. Per the package insert, serum concentrations of different doses were provided at varying time intervals. IM ceftriaxone was completely absorbed and achieved peak concentrations at two to three hours. Treatments are fairly straightforward. How about patients with true allergies or pregnant women? Alternatives for true allergies and pregnant women. Allergies and pregnancy can make treatment therapies much more complex. For chlamydia infections, we already discussed doxycycline and azithromycin. An alternative but less effective option would be levofloxacin 
500 milligrams by mouth once daily for seven days. Azithromycin is safe in pregnant women and should be the preferred agent for these patients. Gonorrhea infections will need dual agent treatment in the setting of true cephalosporin allergies. Patients should receive gentamicin, 240 mg intramuscularly, in addition to azithromycin, 2000 mg for one dose. Note the increased dose of the latter compared to standard dosing. When ceftriaxone is unavailable, oral cefixime 400 mg by mouth once can be considered. However, this should be reserved for limited cases with concerns of increasing resistance. Ceftriaxone is the only single-dose monotherapy we have left to reliably treat gonorrhea. Be a steward so we can keep it that way. Therapy will not change for pregnant women since ceftriaxone is safe to the mother and baby. The dosing would be the same, ceftriaxone 500 mg IV or IM and 1000 mg for those weighing greater than 150 kg. Early prevention and timely treatment with high risky behavior. Chlamydia trachomatis and Neisseria gonorrhea are the primary causative pathogens for the two most common STIs in the United States. The preferred treatment for chlamydia is doxycycline 100 mg by mouth twice daily for seven days, with the alternative being azithromycin 1000 mg by mouth once. Levofloxacin 500 mg by mouth daily for seven days can be considered in the setting of true allergies. Gonorrhea can be treated with cetraxone 500 mg IV or IM with an increased dose of 1000 mg for those weighing greater than 150 kg. With true allergies, gentamicin 240 mg IM as well as azithromycin 2000 mg by mouth once is an alternative. Oral cefixime is an option when ceftriaxone is unavailable. Azithromycin and ceftriaxone are both safe for pregnant women. It's also important to note that test of cure is recommended for pregnant women at four weeks when treating chlamydia and gonorrhea. One reason to be an antimicrobial steward, to keep the only reliable single dose monotherapy we have for treating gonorrhea. If you enjoyed the content today, hit the subscribe and notification bell. For more farm facts deposits in your drug bank, check out another video on my page, share the farm facts with a friend, and I hope you learned something new.